Someone recently asked me, so what is reality? If this is a dream, what is reality? Well, <clears throat> I can speak only for what it is that has occurred here. There was a lot of confusion when I first realized I had no personal self and then a bunch of awakenings happened, a bunch of experiences happened, a bunch of insights came, a bunch of realizations came. And one of the hardest things to deal with was to understand that these realizations and insights were pointers and that by squeezing on to them, by holding on to them for dear life the way I used to hold on to the idea of this dream world being a real thing that would somehow, if I just only did the right stuff, it would protect me, it would keep me safe, it would create my happiness, it would bring me love, it would do all those things, I thought. And that's not true. It never did any of those things. It doesn't have the power to do those things. How could it? I had to figure out what stance to take with the awarenesses, the insights, and the realizations that just kept coming. <laughs> it's really true. Once your eyes are opened, you see things. You see. You see. I see. No eye to see. Which, by the way, that's a good example. We'll use that. There was this huge pointer of there's no personal self, no I, no me. When that was seen to be absolutely the real deal, in fact, it was so real that there was just so much laughter and tears over the ludicrousness of ever even imagining that there had been an individual person living somewhere inside this body. It, 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 it <laughs> There's no way to, to make that make any sense anymore. And yet for months afterwards, the idea that there was no personal self was something that went from being a pointer to something. It, 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 it was a a thing that was held on to as if it would keep me safe, as if it would bring me love, as if it would bring me the bliss and joy and peace I always wanted. And granted, I was having some of that. Lots of things were happening at that time. However, it's a pointer. The pointer right here that says there's no personal self, there's no entity inside this body, the pointer points to something else, and it took a, 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 a relatively long time before I could see that it, what it was pointing to was that there never had been a self, but there had been something else. And what is here instead of a personal self is a nothing. Whew. Yeah. There's no way to talk about what's actually here. Consciousness is here. There, that's one way to say it. Consciousness is here. Consciousness was always here. Just because I thought there was a, a self, a me, a Lisa, that doesn't erase the fact that there never was one of those. And consciousness, let's just say, we'll call it that, consciousness was always what was here. Consciousness is what woke up in the little tiny baby's body. Consciousness is what will be here until this body-mind dies. But beyond consciousness, and some take exception to that phrase, some say there's nothing beyond consciousness. I say, this is the experience here, beyond consciousness, which is movement, there is no movement, and that movement is called, that non-movement is called awareness. And then beyond awareness is that out of which awareness arose. And there's nothing to say about that. Because that's the no thing that encompasses everything and is not anything at all. And I call that the absolute. It has no references.
there are those, the great masters, who apparently, and I think this is probably um, true or, true is not the word, but I'll use true because it's close. I think it's true that there are some of the great masters that actually completely shed the attachment to mind, which is what m moves in consciousness or consciousness moves in it and they live as the absolute and when they say I they're referring to themselves as the absolute the unending the non-beginning the nothing the everything the beyond so that's reality it, it can't even be discussed or barely and everything that's said about it is not true while well, it's true <coughs> So I don't, I, I, getting involved with that kind of talk it doesn't, doesn't work very well, at least here. However, when we're talking about what is real and what isn't real, it's clear here, it is absolutely clear here that when these eyes look out, what they're seeing is the dream world and that the eyes themselves are part of that dream world. Some people, when they look out, what they see is oneness. They experience it as oneness. That, that doesn't happen here, although there is a true, profound understanding that there's only one thing here. One thing here, and it's not a thing. This is the dream. We are in the dream. There is no we to be in it. There is nothing to be in. So, we'll set that aside. <laughs> Reality, uh, for those of us who are not fully awake, for those of us who are not awake at all, by awake what I mean is seeing things as they are, as opposed to seeing things as they are not. Reality is individualized in the sense of each body-mind unit has its own take on reality because it latches on to thoughts about reality. And we can easily understand that uh, with seven billion human body-minds walking the planet, there's going to be seven billion different sets of thoughts that look out into the dream and say, well, the dream is this, the dream is that. No, no, the dream is this. No, it's that over there. Seven billion different realities, yes? Each one unique to the body-mind unit that has it. Those are realities with a small r is what I think of it as. And then the absolute is the foundation of it all. But since we can't really talk about that coherently, let's focus on this reality right here. If indeed seven billion different worlds, dimensions of experience are happening right now, yours is one of them, this body-mind unit has has one too, still. That, that doesn't change. Just because the pointer was seen that there's no self, all the conditioning is in place here as it is in you and lots of that stays, lots of it goes. So how to look at this idea of what is reality? Here it's a two-step thing. Number one, whatever, whatever it is that is being experienced is going to be reality here. The reality of what's heard, what's seen, what's tasted, what's felt, what's smelled. The reality of what's thought has changed a lot. Those first ones haven't. Because the thoughts are allowed to just go through. And then beyond that, without a personal self, the idea of a personal self, and remember it's only an idea, without that idea to interfere and color everything, there is the opportunity to see that this reality here is transitory 
and the one thing that is not transitory is not experienceable and yet it can be used as a ground very lightly very lightly very lightly <laughs> 